welcome to a special live broadcast of Global Journalist. I'm Lee Wilkins. Tonight we are live from the Reynolds Journalism Institute on the MU campus. I'm joined by a very special group, the public who've come here, and five women journalists, three of us here in person, one on the phone, and a fifth visiting us via Skype. The topic, women in journalism. What advantages and disadvantages do women have as journalists? Do you have questions for any of our guests? Share your stories or your questions. If you're in the room with us, just raise your hand and someone will come over with a microphone. If you're listening at home, we hope you'll join us as well. Give us a call at 573-882-8925 or go online to globaljournalist, all one word, dot org. From there, you can watch the live webcast and participate in a live chat conversation. Our panelists have interesting stories of their own. First, we have Mary Kay Blakely, a contributing editor to Ms. Magazine and a former columnist for the New York Times. Professor Blakely teaches writing courses in MU's journalism school. Next, we have Salem Solomon. Salem works for the study abroad office in MU's journalism school. In her home country of Eritrea, she's worked as a producer and anchorwoman. Next, you have Yuli. Yuli is a doctoral student at MU's Journalism School, and before coming to the United States, she worked as a reporter for the legal and political beat of a daily newspaper in Dali in China. And tonight, we're using many forms of communication. By Skype, we have Monika Viamazar, a reporter for Al Jazeera English stationed in Washington, DC. Monika has covered many war zones and crisis situations around the world, including the conflict in Colombia and the Haitian earthquake. And by phone, we have Gonaz Esfadia Ray, a senior correspondent for Radio Free Europe and Radio Liberty. Well, I'd like to begin the conversation by talking a little bit about the experiences of women journalists and trying to get our audience involved right away. Before we came on the air, we were talking about the stereotypes that people have of women journalists. And I think where we left off with the conversation is whether or not women have an advantage as reporters because we are perceived to be um, more empathetic, more we have more emotional intelligence, and all of those sorts of mm, soft, mushy kind of things that are stereotypically associated with women. Um, I, Mary Kay, I wanted to ask you a, a little bit about this because you've done a lot of work that's involved a lot of in-depth interviewing. And I think over the course of time, do you think that those qualities that women bring to the table actually make a difference or is this something that's more mm, learned journalistic technique? I do think that we carry our conversation skills over into the job and the conversation skills. I was talking to a male journalist the other day who said, I just learned that if you're talking to a subject, you can get more information if you just be quiet and listen and cock your head a little bit to the side. <laughs> and then just be quiet and they will keep talking. And I think, actually, that's what we do. We listen and maintain eye contact. And a connection does happen between sources and journalists when you do that. You do get a lot more private, personal stories that have everything to do with the social issues that we're covering, but they add another dimension. Ilya, I know we were talking beforehand. You said you know women do are perceived as doing the the fluffy, the not you know the not so important stuff. But Mar Mary Kay, something that said something really struck me is that women do the social issues, and to me, at this time, it's the social issues that are really the important thing. Um, and you've done a lot of this sort of work. So do you, do you think that you know being a woman and having those kinds of of, of insights has has helped you, and and how? I think it does help me a lot. Um, in talking about this human interaction and social networking, I do think that women has a advantage over the men to get closer to people and to be able to develop a connection with people. But on the other hand, um, I also sometimes um, encounter some misunderstanding among my colleagues and also among my peers, <coughs> especially female peers. Um, hmm. For example, the debate that I used to cover the legal and um, the politics, there are very few women in the um, department, but the editor was a female journalist who has been in the field for 20 years. So she was very supportive, but sometimes when um, that I, I was sent to cover a certain beat, if you develop, because you're gonna be careful with the relationship with certain kind of politicians or the important figure that you um, deal with. And sometimes that you can get a story versus your male, um, 
partner cannot, then there's some gossip going on saying that, well, you know, <laughs> she's, being she's being treated favorably by the main interview interviewer than, you know, the other side. And I also have a friend who covers sports, um, also domestically and internationally, and she constantly feel this mis misunderstanding among his male um, journalists as well, because she compete with them on the same story and the same story beat. And sometimes she can get the story versus the other can't, and then she has to be very careful with this distance she has to keep with, his, with her interviewee. Monica, so. if there ever was a social interest story, it had to be Haiti. At least that was certainly the way it was. It was played a lot in this country. When you were covering Haiti, do you think the fact that you were a woman helped you or hurt you in certain ways, or, or, did, it, or did it enter into what you were able to accomplish much at all? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? I, I'm not hearing you very well. Okay, um, when you were covering Haiti, which I think is a social interest story, do you think the fact that you were a woman helped you cover that story or, or was it a disadvantage in some ways? Um, no, I think uh, in Haiti and in other places that I've worked, um, being a woman has always actually helped me. And I think something that's important to keep in mind is that I think female war reporters are extremely necessary uh, today to be deployed in conflict situations or war zones because many of the victims in the world, unfortunately, civilian victims, um, are women. And I think that um, culturally, in some countries, actually, women who are victims cannot speak to men at all. So I know that my male colleague reporters um, would have a very difficult time getting interviews. In the particular case of Haiti, I think uh, I was able to talk to women a lot easier, and I think they would share more of their stories with me, especially the stories, as you probably know, um, in, the, in the camps that are still um, there, you know, after the earthquake, almost a little bit more than a year after the earthquake. Uh, there were a lot of incidents uh, of rape, and uh, we did several reports on that, and we were able to talk to rape victims. Uh, I think it does make a difference when the reporter covering the story is a woman. Um, and I think it does reflect on the angle of the news story as well, which, which okay. is interesting. I, I mean, I, I've noticed that. Golnaz, um, I want to follow up on that because you've done a lot of reporting about the wives of political prisoners in Iran, which I don't think is an angle that would mm, automatically occur to, to necessarily anybody. It certainly isn't a, isn't a common one that we've seen here. Do you think you came to that approach because you're a woman or because you had specific contacts? Or how, how did that all happen? Of course, it's always, um, it always helps to have good contacts, but I, I definitely think it helps to be a woman because um, it's easier for those wives, those women, to open up speaking to another woman. I had that experience with the wives of political prisoners and also reporting from Afghanistan. You know, in these uh, countries, this male-dominated culture, uh, it's very difficult for women to talk about their um, private lives, about their or share their stories with a man. So it's always better to be a woman because you can uh, get close to them and they trust you, they, they, they talk to you, they um, share their stories, they share their pains. Slim, what about you? Um, following that, in fact, I was thinking the same thing, uh, especially if you're reporting in a patriarchal society where uh, it's mostly dominated by men and the traditional, <laughs> the traditional, you know, attitude is, you know, you, 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 you don't open up to men if you're a, a woman and living in a small village. And so as a woman, if you're reporting uh, in areas such as uh, this, uh, I think the women feel more comfortable when you're talking to them. And so you have that advantage, somewhat. Well, okay. it, it's really interesting, because I think it is an advantage, and I think in other ways it's a disadvantage. I want to go back to something Eli said. I spent most of my life as a political reporter, and I think that a lot of times I was sort of, you know, just patted on the head and say, there, there, dear. And I remember the first investigative story I did when the, when the person I was investigating, who was the sheriff who was on the take, finally realized that it was me who was doing the investigating. He looked at me and he said, 
I knew somebody was looking into it, but I never dreamed it was you. And I always sort of wondered, was that, was that because I was all of 22? Was that because I was a girl? Well, you know, was that because it was, I was the first woman police reporter that he ever encountered? So I mean, I sometimes wonder if because you know, we're perceived as being soft, it also means that we can't be um, tough or critical in the way that, that good journalists have to be. I, I'm seeing a lot of nodding. Uh, um, Monica, you want to jump in? <laughs> <clears throat> okay, Mary Kay. <laughs> I was just going to say we even use the words hard news and soft news to keep separated what are the banner headlines from government versus what are the ins and outs of people's everyday lives. <clears throat> but if we look at the issues that are being debated by today's media about how to make newspapers a more interesting read, how to make the media more interesting to people, and we're going through that huge debate, which we just had in this very same room last Monday, about are we supposed to be reporting what's popular or are we supposed to be reporting what's important? And I think just taking that word, important, we would say important to whom? and what facts are important. And the facts that are most important to women are not always exactly the same facts that are important to men. I'm seeing a lot of nodding of heads, go. Um, I don't know, I, I, I kind of agree with you. Uh, but also in terms of, um, um, I would like to speak about, of course, Eritrea. <laughs> uh, that's where I'm from. So um, keeping in mind that uh, um, Eritrea is not familiar to a lot of people because it's only been internationally recognized only 19 years. And so 30% of uh, freedom fighters uh, were women. So you'd think in terms of uh, war reporting or crisis reporting, women would have the upper hand um, after independence. Um, but women are still struggling to, to fill that gap between uh, between the traditional thinking within the society mm -hmm. because it's not proportional. So um, even if it's a, a society where uh, military is, is dominant and uh, everybody is a soldier, including women, um, when, when it comes to reporting, it's not balanced. Okay. Um, one of the stereotypes that we came up with in the audience before we were sort of we went on the air was that women are often perceived of as not managerial, mm -hmm. and there are a lot of young women in this audience who I think have ambitions to be managerial in one form or another. A couple of women in this audience I see who I know have been managers. Um, Mary Kay, you were the one that sort of came up with that. What do you when you said not managerial? What do you mean? We're not we're we're not capable of being promoted. We're too much on the mommy track. Um, you know. <laughs> What, what all goes on here? All of those things. In fact, I'm still a bean counter. I started being a bean counter 30 years ago, counting the number of bylines in the New York Times review of books, um, how, many, uh, how many books by men were um, covered, and how many books by women were covered, and how many bylines hit the front page that were female, and who is making those decisions. And it's true that today, women can constitute 75 to even 80 percent of student populations. But if you then look at the profession, you can see that women are not making 75 to 80 percent of the decisions in journalism. So something happens between graduation and that first step onto the career rung and the ladder. And I'm very interested in learning what it is. I'm very interested in learning whether the internet, the new media, blogging, webcasting is going to change that a great deal. The speed with which news circulates out could change that too. And I mean, Barnes & Noble will tell you women buy way more books than men. So why are we not reviewing way more books by women? <laughs> 